Welcome into the CHGO White Sox Post Game Show, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook. Download the app today and use promo code CHGO when you sign up. Welcome into Studio A of our CHGO offices here in the West Loop of Chicago after a White Sox winner. They win 6-3 to three in Houston, split the series, and they, after the first four games of the season, are exactly where they were last year at 500. Um, I'm Sean Anderson. You can follow me on Twitter at Sean underscore W underscore Anderson. That's Vinny Duber. You can follow him on Twitter at Vinny Duber. He's our CHGO White Sox beat writer. That's Herb Lawrence. Hello. You can follow him on Twitter at Ecknerwall23. He's our CHGO White Sox community leader. We'll talk about this game. We'll talk about the series as a whole. Talk a little bit about Mike Clevenger's performance today. Talk a lot about Yohan Moncada's performance over the next uh, the past four games. And then talk about some takeaways heading into tomorrow. And major note for all you Sox fans, especially sure. you attending... <laughs> uh, <laughs> after uh, all you major Sox fans... Uh, damn it, I did it again. Uh, the game's 2-10 tomorrow. <laughs> they changed the start time because of the weather forecast. They will be playing uh, beginning at 2.10 p.m. on the south side of Chicago as opposed to the originally scheduled 3.10 p.m. start time. Thank you, Vinny. You're welcome. Uh, so uh, hopefully we don't get rained out, but uh, we will not have a pregame tomorrow. Herb and I will try to be at the stadium, be around there for opening day, uh, take in the atmosphere, and then we'll come back probably uh, around the 7th or 8th inning uh, and then be here for postgame. Vinny will obviously be at the park. Uh, it's his job. Uh, and uh, you can follow him on Twitter, uh, at Vinny Duber, for uh, updates all throughout the day, especially if there is rain or any delays. Uh, Vinny will have you updated uh, with up to the minute data. Let's get into today's day, uh, today's game. Sox win 6-3. to three. Do we want to start with the hitters? Do we want to start talking about pick-to-click? Because we want to uh, clarify what's going on. Did Yohan Moncada win pick-to-click today? It, whether, oh, yeah. whether we're starting, wherever we're starting, we're starting with Yohan Moncada because this guy is on fire to start the season. We saw it in the World Baseball Classic, the way he almost hit 500 over the course of that tournament. And boy, has he carried it right over. A lot of people looking at Luis Robert, who... Homer today, who doubled today, who did a little defensive thing that I'm sure we're going to be talking about <laughs> later. But, um, you know, he was struggling coming into today for those first three games. A lot of people, oh, my God, get him out of that two-hole, put Moncada there. Leave Yoan Moncada right where he is because uh, if it ain't broke, you don't fix it. Not only that, he is showing a kind of power, a kind of extra base ability that is perfect in the heart of the lineup. Uh, the guy has just been fantastic through the first four games of the season, and he looks like a completely different player um, from what we saw last year, which was arguably the least productive hitter on the team to go right along with Yasmani Grandal. Um I've, I was saying it during the offseason, saying it during the preseason. The most important people in this White Sox lineup to get it back on track, Moncada, Grandal, to go from the nothing they did last year to back to normal this year. And now, my goodness, uh, it, Moncada is off to a fantastic start. I know that Yoan and uh, Yasmani have the extra base hits, but I mean, Tim Anderson probably deserves a mention too because he had a hit in every single game. Yeah, but one hit. Today, I guess. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Only Long one hit. hit. Oh. Only a rocket uh, double off the center field yeah. fence Only to bring in a run. Get, yeah, didn't you know? It wasn't weren't didn't. important runs, especially in the ninth inning. Yeah, it didn't leave the yard like my man Yoan Mancada, who I think uh, supplied the game-winning home run, right? As it turned out eventually, right? Yes. So this is what I'm talking about. Like, if you were like but hated Yoan Mancada before this weekend series, I just don't understand because, as Vinny said, like when he's right. He's this, and he gloves it with the best of them. And I told you guys last year, he is a top seven third baseman in the league. Now, did I think he would be this this weekend? Hell no. But he has shown a lot of people that Yoan Moncada might be back to levels that we've aspired him to be. And so if he's this, the sky is the limit for the White Sox. And if Yasmani Grandal's hit, he continues hitting the ball with authority. And now Luis has found himself in, mm, you know, it's, well. what was dumb? Well, it's dumb pitching by them. I would never throw him a fastball, especially this whole weekend. You see him being out on sleepers and sliders. But Luis took advantage of a high fastball and crushed it. And so Yoan Moncada is hitting it from everywhere. Like you throw him inside, he's going to hit a double down the line. You throw him outside, he's going to hit a home run off the changeup or the fastball like he did both times in the Crawford boxes this weekend. So for those people who I know you had a hard year last year because Yoan sucked, and he'll be the first person to say it, but you had to know that that isn't the player that he is. This is more the player that Yoan Moncada is. And so to go along with him being this good – the White Sox, I think, also 
are this good and they look good the whole weekend. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, of course, they had a couple things that were confusing and bad from this series, but they beat the Houston Astros this weekend, even though it came to be tied. They looked like the better team overall these four games. Well, and what? The, the Astros won their games by two and one. White Sox won by one and three. So White Sox end up with the positive run differential. Uh, after they out-hit them. 45 uh, hits to, let's see, 29. That's an ass-whooping. <laughs> 35 to 29 is an ass 45. Oh, 45. Sorry, I misheard you. That is an ass whooping. And we heard on the broadcast, too, most doubles as well. Uh, and we heard, uh, or at least I heard on ESPN 1000 driving in, uh, Len Castro mentioning that balls in play are up 20%. Uh, batting average on balls in play is, are up 20%. And we talked a ton last year how the White Sox had the second most hard hit balls, but they had uh, a launch angle that rivaled the Rockies. Uh, right, it was around uh, ten, and that's basically hitting balls in the dirt a lot. Uh, the Astros were consistently hitting line drives, right? That's what we want to see with the White Sox. Now the shift, seeing Yasmani Grandal sneak a couple through, uh, Yoan Moncada just making contact and, and putting a nice ball in play uh, down the line for a double. Uh, Stevens flashed the gra- graphic here of Yoan Moncada's stats: uh, eight for eighteen this series, a four forty four batting average, an OPP of four seventy four, uh, a cool slugging percentage of uh 944 um want to make sure i had that completely right uh two doubles two homers four rbi uh absolutely amazing stuff great gloves and uh, shoe combo as well from yoan we don't expect anything always, else from him always uh but if he is truly back and we just see him finding a rhythm that he hasn't found, and I know World Baseball Classic is not the regular season, but it is a step up from spring training, and it seemed massively important for all these players that I think it rivaled the intensity of regular season play, if not even further. Yo, Makata, we haven't seen him be this consistent in, in this much of a groove for a long time. We saw it in spurts, six hits, five hits uh, last year in games, but putting it together like this, it, it hasn't been like that for a while, and Exit velocities of 104.9, 91.7, 103.7. These are some of your favorite radio stations. 98.5, 96, 96.4, 88.5, 98.1, 90.5, and 78.8. And that one was a double. Uh, Just making nice contact. And like we talked a lot yesterday with the Astros, just putting balls in play in front of guys. uh, uh, Down, what? oh, he's not. KPW. He's not top seven. He's top five. Um. Moncada, basically a Who's heart. Dead? Who are you pointing to? Oh, sorry, <laughs> Yoan haters. Oh, I thought you were pointing. <laughs> I thought you were point, maybe pointing because because Connor is up in Canada. I thought maybe you were pointing oh, north. Yeah. North of Canada is <laughs> up there. Yeah. Uh, average exit velocity of ninety four point seven, which is basically a hard hit every single time coming up to the plate. Uh, so great stuff from Yoan in uh, ten batted ball events over four games. You you can keep talking about the World Baseball Classic. I think you should because we heard before that tournament that it was going to benefit these guys and boy it sure looks like it has but nothing is benefiting you on Moncada right now more than being healthy uh, yeah. I think you talked you just talked about it how long it's been since we've seen consistency from him it's because he's been consistently unhealthy for basically the last th- entire three seasons uh, even at times when he was well enough to play to take the field in 2021 and 2022 he was banged up. He was dealing with that baseball stuff. Obviously, 2020, that was the COVID infection. But in the last two seasons, I, I remember down in Houston in 2021 talking to Yoan Moncada about, hey, Eloy's hurt. Luis is hurt. At the time, Nick Madrigal was hurt. Yasmani Grandal was uh, about to be hurt. Uh, and it was a, I'm healthy enough to play. I need to be out here. I'm not, I'm not 100%, but I need to be out here. The team needs me to be out here right now. And... I think it obviously affected his play because, you know, every time you swing the bat or every time, uh, you know, you feel like you're getting in a groove and you feel something pull, it's hard to get some consistency. He's healthy right now. He's feeling healthy. And this goes for a lot of the guys on the team, obviously, because it was such a, a, a hindrance to everybody a year ago. But Moncada was one of those guys. He was put on the IL the day before the season started last year in Detroit. Here he is as the season starts, feeling healthy, feeling good, and looking like he did the last time he was consistently healthy in 2019. Since 2020, over a span of four games, obviously small sample size, uh, but sorted by hits, most hits in a four-game span that he's had since 2020. Uh, next recent would be uh, 825 to 9.8 of last year, um, and then third highest slugging percentage uh, over a four-game stretch as well. Uh, so, I mean, it just seems like 
he might be back. We, dare we say it? Yo, I might be back. Uh, we said it after all those short performances, but uh, seeing it over a series against the Astros as well. Uh, really, really great to see for the top seven third baseman uh, in, in Major League Baseball. Uh, decent de- defense. Uh, this series from Yohan, I know there was the bad throw for Vaughn. I feel like there was another error as well. Just uh, that would, one. Or there was a nice pick by Vaughn today. It was kind of a bang-bang play. Yeah, um, it was so, on the bunt where he came, charged it up, picked it with that, the glove, and then went underneath, play. and Vaughn helped him with the pick on the base. But, yeah, for the most part, his defense was solid. And, I mean, when you got Bregman in the same place, it's hard to be the best third baseman in the building. But he matched up with Bregman. But Bregman, man, that man is otherworldly. He didn't do it with the bat at all, 0 for 16, but – he can glove it. He was extremely cold last year as well, and then he started getting heated up uh, when he, the Astros hung 21 runs on the, the Astros. That game got him back in a group. 21-5, yeah. Um, remember that one. That'll do it. That will do it. <laughs> uh, games like this, though, for the White Sox, scoring three runs, three runs, four runs, six runs, uh, probably because Yohan Moncada and Yasmin Yasmani Grandal aren't dead weight. Um, you know, Just kind of putting those two together, the switch hitters and the idea of both of them coming kind of fully healthy now, um, it – I don't know, it's too early to say they're back, but it's just great signs of life from both of them. Uh, and to the credit of both of them, I'm like Grandal defensively uh, stole a strikeout for Clevenger today uh, just with the way he framed it. So uh, really great stuff from both of those. I know just looking for the kind of health of the White Sox in 2023, the signs that they're showing are huge for, for this team. Really, when you, t- when you look at the offense, I-, I can only think of maybe one or two guys who didn't, you know, have a, a productive weekend. Certainly, you know, more, some guys did it better, way better than others. Right. But, I mean, Tim Anderson, Moncada, uh, Grandal, really consistently good all weekend. We saw some good signs from, from Oscar Colas. We saw some good signs today from Luis Robert Jr. We saw some good signs in the second game from Aloy Jimenez. Uh, really, the only person that I can think of is Elvis Andrews, who really hasn't done much. He had, I think, just the one the one single that, that got him one away from 2000, and maybe mm-hmm. he'll um, pick up that that uh, milestone hit tomorrow in the home opener. But uh, Reach base today by getting hit. Yeah, he got hit, in the, hit in, the in the chest. chest. Yeah, um, uh, He's got the lowest batting average on the team, uh, 125. Uh, but, I mean, T.A., like you said, yeah. batting 389. Gavin Sheets didn't do so well in his lone start yeah. the other day. And but, yeah. Romy had a nice, uh, I think, single, but he was pulled after day. two at-bats. Yeah. So, I mean, mm-hmm. he didn't really get a, a huge flex. Colas, I mean, at, at times looked a little bit, like a rookie, uh, yeah, but also, today. I mean, today bounced back. I mean, he had a really nasty strikeout against uh, Luis Garcia in his first at bat, and then uh, came up with two hits later in uh, the first, later at bats. Yeah, and uh, they threw him a high fastball. Like that was what I want to discuss too. It was a sixth inning, I believe. Luis Garcia had ninety one pitches, so maybe at his limit, and maybe they had this predetermined. But you had just saw Colas two times and made him look silly both times he faced him. And so I was kind of surprised that Dusty took him out at that time. And I think he put Phil Maton on and because Garcia was just throwing him cutter, 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 cutter. And he struck him out in three pitches in uh, what was the second inning and then threw him a cutter high and he popped it up. And so I was like, okay, you see the bats he's had versus this specific pitcher. We can hold him on for one more guy and get him out. I'm glad Dusty didn't because then Oscar Colas got a fastball elevated from Phil Maton and he served it to the other side of the field and he was very hyped. He is uh, the giddiest man of all time when singles hit. Imagine when he hits a home run. Imagine if he would have hit a home run versus Luis Garcia. He would have did some cartwheels onto home plate. But, yeah, it's good to see a young player just be so exuberant and so happy and battle through the – failure that he had early in the game to get a hit there and then get a infield single later in the game oh my goodness the emotion that we saw after he made that catch right. oh, just yeah. the middle <laughs> of the game that. i mean listen it, it ended the inning and it, had he not caught it it would have been you know a run scoring uh hit but my goodness he made a, a, a good catch certainly one that was dwarfed by what Luis robert jr did in the ninth inning but um he popped up like he just saved a no hitter from really? from from being uh from being broken up because that was a quite the reaction to a uh, a nice but not maybe not overly spectacular play in right field. Well, and overall, like in right field, he didn't dazzle. Uh, he wasn't super clean out there. There was a couple balls that bounced through his legs, escaped from him, uh, trying to catch a ball in foul territory, just running into the wall, uh, bouncing back like a four-year-old, though. Uh, just <laughs> seemed like unfazed. But, you know, again, showing signs of a rookie. But I also think that just seeing how emotional he got and how kind of 
he just seemed really amped. Like, I don't know. He's he just seems really excited to be playing in his first four games. I think, you know, That's once good. the once he gets a day off on, on the the fourth, maybe he'll be able to take some of that in. And uh, a composed Oscar Colas will be interesting to watch. But right now, he just seems to be running on anxiety, but adrenaline. A, a going crazy all the time Oscar Colas would be fun to watch, too. It yeah. might not, well, bring might the not energy, yield the absolutely. best results, but it would be entertaining. It doesn't certainly. seem like the energy's harnessed, though. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to change, change the kid. I want him to be this joyful, this kind of naive and very happy player all the time that means he's done something well the team's done something well don't let baseball beat you down always have a good time but it's just weird to see because when you see baseball players all the time the kind of stoic head down he likes to celebrate and that's great I want him to celebrate when he does well yeah no absolutely I'm not trying to coach that out I'm just saying you know it does seem like really juiced Mm -hmm. uh, you know uh which is great hey that's uh, fun hey that's what people were looking for all last year and didn't see from the White Sox all last year so you bring some more smiles and some more screams on the field I think uh the fans are going to have a lot a lot better time this year than they did a year ago we'll talk about it later in our takeaways Uh, we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to get into Mike Clevenger but the offense does seem to be back and clicking as Herb said 45 hits they currently lead the league in double uh, which is a lot better than leading the league in singles. So let's go, um, <laughs> which was last year. Uh, I don't know. It was a, it was a little joke. Uh, we watched today's got game. Got him, Sean. Why got, got him? him. Zinger. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> just trying to get to the ad read. Uh, Fubo TV is how we watch today's game. They have over 140 live channels of sports, shows, movies, and news. You can stream live TV from any device and watch most Chicago sports for the lowest price you can start watching immediately with a seven day free trial there is no contract no cable no hassle just sign up and start watching and you get 1000 hours of cloud dvr included at no extra charge so if you feel like you're going to miss the Sox game and want to watch it later or maybe in the morning when you wake up the cloud dvr is there to help you out you can watch local teams while traveling and upcoming uh in about four days there will be the ncaa tournament uh for college hockey on espn2 espn news and ESPN News. You can watch the Frozen Four on all of those channels with Fubo TV. So watch the White Sox on NBC Sports Chicago with Fubo TV. Use the link in the description to sign up for 15% off your first month of Fubo Pro. Again, that is FuboTV.com slash CHGO. Also want to let you know about Goose Island. Uh, Herb, you got a, a little goose right there, Delicious. don't you? Uh, a little rebranded can ah, as well for ah. 312. I uh, I had I had a couple at the uh, at the Hogs game last night. There you okay, go. Hey. yeah. Uh, and then they had those raspberry ones at the uh, Oak Lawn place at Whistle Sports. Those were delicious too. Yeah. Very good. Uh, Very good. Just th- straight three one two mm. over at, at the, the UC. The UC. Yes. Yeah. Okay. About twice the size of that. And, right. You know they they do a nice job of uh, of of maximizing their financial intake on those. But you <laughs> well, know, I was about to say you got to fr- have a three one two at the at the at the hockey game. Thankfully, uh, we're not buying. You know, <laughs> either Goose is sending some beer here, or uh, you know, Jake's going out and buying them himself. But uh, the beer's free here. Uh, CHGO is supported by Goose Island Beer Company, Chicago's beer since 1988. Their beer roster includes the Blackhawk Pale Ale, the three one two, the Bulls City three one two, which matches the Bulls City edition uniforms. They also have the Bourbon County Stout in four flavors, Beer Hug IPA series, and you can get that in a sampler at most of your local uh, alcohol stores, uh, liquor stores. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Green Hall. There's alcohol there, <laughs> there too. The, the Green Line, <laughs> Matilda, and Sophie. Uh, I drink alcohol totally all the time. Uh, Goose <laughs> Island's two <laughs> locations are open and ready to welcome you. Grab a beer right from their innovative tanks at Goose Island's Tap Room at 1800 West Fulton or get a smash burger and fresh beer of the week at the original Clybourne Brewhouse at 1800 North Clybourne. For reservations to pick up, go to gooseisland.com slash location, Goose Island Beer Company. All right, Steven, you want to flash that starting pitcher graphic? All right, so Mike Clevenger started today for the White Sox. He went five innings, no earned runs, three hits, eight strikeouts, three walks. Luis Garcia went for the Astros. He also went five innings, three earned runs, seven hits, four Ks, two walks. Garcia had 91 pitches and couldn't escape the sixth inning. They ended up pulling him before he could actually record an out. Clevenger throwing 98 over five. What did we make of Mike Clevenger in his first start with the White Sox? Pretty good. Pretty good uh, outing. He started off that first inning really rough. Uh, didn't know how to get his rhythm right. He was walking a couple of people. Didn't give up any hits or any runs in the SEC. He didn't give up any runs in the whole game. And he was kind of Lucas Giolito-like. But unlike Lucas did in his outing, he didn't give up any runs in the first couple innings or at, at all. But he was still at the 45 or 46 point pitch mark in the second inning. Then after that, it looked like he settled in and started getting people out on his stuff. And he was um, much more calm, collected, 
And I was surprised the 95 was staying up there and the slider was filthy. It actually was better than I've seen any time last year with the San Diego Padres. But he has to continue this. As a fifth starter, all you want or all I want, and I know he's starting fourth, but I know there's extra reasons why he's not starting for tomorrow. But he's a fifth starter. All you need is five innings like he gave you today, three earned runs or less. And he gave you that. That's all you can ask from Mike Clevenger, and he went above and beyond that. Yeah, I thought, listen, it was a total mystery as we were talking about in the in the recent days what the White Sox were going to get from him from a pitching standpoint. All the conversation about him during the spring didn't really have anything to do with baseball. And so here the season starts and it's like, oh yeah, they got this new pitcher. Is he going to be any good? Who knows? Because he's had a, a, a track record of being good, but you know, Several years ago, the last few have, have not been what the what it was in the past. What are they going to get? Uh, today, I think they couldn't be happier probably with what they got from him because he went out there, struck out a lot of guys, didn't give up a lot of hits, didn't give up any runs. And while, yeah, the pitch count went up there, and there were times those first two innings, he was working. He was working those first two innings. And, uh, you know, interesting to me, I, I'm – we're all still kind of learning what the pitch clock is going to do to pitchers, mm-hmm. right? Obviously, the pitchers had the whole spring to work with it, but um, it seemed like he wasn't really in a groove with that pitch clock, and especially in the first inning. He would get the ball and kind of do that whole walk around the mound <laughs> thing that, that we've known pitchers to do for, for years and years now. You can't do that anymore. you got to get the ball and get ready to go, and uh, by the third, fourth inning, that was cleaned up. He, he seemed to be in a much better rhythm, uh, and certainly the results were good. Now, he hit a couple of guys walking Walked a couple of guys. You don't want to see that, obviously, uh, if you're the White Sox. But everything else, probably with the exception of that pitch count going up, 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 that you know limited him to five innings, uh, they probably are thrilled with what they got out of a guy who, like you say, Herb, statistically, they are hoping everything goes right, is their fifth starter. Yeah, when he was good uh, back in 2018 uh, and 2019, his fastball was the reason why uh, negative four run value and negative 21 run value on that pitch. And his fastball looked better than all of 2022, without a doubt. Um, he was up about a mile and a half on his velocity for his forcing fastball. Uh, his average was at 94.7. Your average was 93.6. And that came down as the game went later on. Uh, but he was consistently hitting 95 into the fourth. Uh, and obviously added velocity is going to add more backspin to you uh, and we talk about uh, rise on fastball or fast, fastballs having that rising effect uh, to hitters that's due to uh, vertical break and if you could take vertical break off of that uh, you're probably going to get more swings and misses uh, he had two inches less of vertical break uh, so his average was around 12 uh, this game last year was around 14 14 is pretty bad uh, like Raylo who throws a very very fast uh, bullet fastball his vertical movements around eight inches. So being around 10 is, you know, elite. Like Liam has great uh, vertical uh, or lack of vertical movement on his fastball, uh, and that's why it's so effective. So seeing an effective fastball like that is great for Clevenger. Um, Also, swings and misses. He got it on a slider. He got it on his fastball. Uh, 16 swings on a slider, seven whiffs. 28 swings on his fastball, six whiffs, uh, and a called strike whiff percentage of 30 percent major league average around 28 to 29 percent on a slider two called strike with percentage of 36 percent uh so he was uh pretty good uh the slider uh when it was hit hit pretty hard uh 99.2 but it wasn't hit often uh which was the real reason to his success today um i don't know if i love the pitch it's still under 85 miles per hour not a ton of velocity we see Ronaldo lopez you know adding up to like you know two miles per hour on his slider getting up to like 91 uh that's when it gets to like really effective speeds is around 85. So I don't know if I love the slider, but he was locating it well. Uh, I do want to show this though, the fastball uh, location. You could see he was really good at nailing that kind of outer side of the strike zone, but it was kind of wild. Hit a couple guys, as we mentioned, maybe he didn't hit Chaz McCormick. Uh, that, was, that won't be up to ba- debate and we could uh, you know go slow-mo on that uh, whenever we want. But um, the stuff for Clevenger was overall good. Um, no Jordan Alvarez in this lineup, but uh, still a pretty formidable li- lineup for the Astros today. Saw, saw a horse there, I think, Herb. What did you see in the, <laughs> uh, in the Rorschach test there from Sean? I think, uh, yeah, like a uh, uh, balloon animal. Yeah, but a horse. Like you got, looking, the, head, you like got the ear and the head on the left there. You get the mane, the nice mane. Obviously some smaller legs there. But like yeah, the butts, yeah. that, like looking at the top of the, stro- the zone with the red right there, and then the, ho- the horse and or dog is looking the other way towards the guy who's in the right-handed bite box. Correct. I th- Am I crazy, though? Does no, that mean I'm crazy? No. I mean, okay. like maybe like a, 
maybe uh, the main shape, maybe like a gummy bear. Kind of. A little bit. I see it. A little bit. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. yeah. Steven? Steven, what do you see? I, the gummy bear is actually going. I, I was just going to keep it simple and say a person. I see the two legs there in the bottom right-hand corner. Gotcha. See the face in the upper left. Yeah. I, it looks like a person. Yeah. All right. All right, that's uh, a Rorschach. Uh, hour. I'll, I'll say this. We did this. <laughs> that's our Rorschach segment of the of the day. Uh, I'll, I'll share this. Uh, the White Sox passed along that uh, Mike Clevenger is the fourth pitcher since 2000 to throw at least five scoreless innings in his White Sox debut. Can you name the other three? Since 2000, I was going to say Wilson Alvarez, but that's not since then. I'm I'm going to take a, a guess. I think I know one. I think one is Lance Lynn. No. Okay, I thought that was his five homeowner. innings, no runs. At least five innings. I believe everybody else went more than five innings, but yeah. Oof. Um, just going to take a shot in the dark. Cat Latos. Yes. Matt Latos is one of them. Yes. That is correct. You got the hardest one. The other two are okay. not quite as difficult. I was going to say. Because yeah. uh, I remember he started off 6-0, and oh, and then he yeah. fell off the table immediately. Sweaty Freddy Garcia? No. I'm going to go with, hmm, um, Esteban Loiza. No, I was going to say him. Uh, may, maybe uh, ooh, uh, uh, Jose Contreras. Ooh, you had it half. You had the first name. Well, it's, I'm going to guess Jose, it's Jose Quintana. Jose then. Quintana, and then the other one, Mark Burley, last year. Last? White Sox debut. Oh, I know who that. Is. Yeah, Johnny Cueto. Johnny Cueto, oh, it is. Okay. Oh yeah, he, yeah, he dominated. Mm-hmm. Miss him. Damn it, down in Kansas City, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> great. Uh, I can't believe I got the Cat Lo- Latos one. <laughs> Um, well, hey, and and we, you know, if if it is signs to come, then if Johnny Cueto is doing in his first start, we, you know, obviously we, Johnny Cueto was a great fifth starter for the White Sox. You're getting that from from Mike Clevenger. I mean, again, if you're getting this hitting and you're getting this pitching, um, I think Raymond uh, in the chat earlier said five uh, earned runs for the starters in 34 innings pitched uh, this series. So that's just a, a fantastic way to go. We talked about how successful they were in 2021 because of the starting pitching. Great sign. And on the other side, you see the Astros, none of them completed six innings today. They're starters for this whole series. Taking that whole great starting staff, which we talked about before this uh, series, you're getting Fromber out early. You're getting Garcia out, or Keedy, and then today with uh, Garcia, oh, I said Garcia already, but you're getting these guys out before the sixth inning and exposing their bullpen to more innings. And so that's a great job by the White Sox hitters. I know that they struggled. Runners in scoring position twice today with the bases loaded with zero outs. Didn't get any runs in. This could have been worse. The White Sox could have beat these people to a pulp today if they actually executed any of the uh, bases loaded with zero people out. So it's a testament to the hitting coach. It's a testament to the White Sox just battering these guys and being a little bit more patient than they were before. Uh, Matthew Cortese is bringing up gummy bears. Of course, I'm always hungry for gummy bears. But uh, my my question to you is... uh, Haribo or Albanese? Haribo. I know the Albanese guy, so I'll go Albanese. I think I, my vote oh, is Albanese. look at you dropping names. Who well, is this yeah. guy? Uh, he oh, was, uh, his can bro- you get us some Albanese? I'm not saying, I, I don't know if I could get We've it. We've known you I for uh, a year plus. What the hell? No, it was, it was slow down. It was, obviously, it's not that strong of a connection if I'm not bringing in gummy bears. <laughs> um, a teacher at Brother Rice's brother is Albanese. Uh, the guy, Brother the, Rice's brother? He's from <laughs> Al- <laughs> Albania? No. No, okay. he's not. <laughs> you said he's, he's not from, Albanian. He's like he's he's Albanese. <laughs> he's not Alba- He's not Albanian. Uh, no, but the teacher's last name is Albanese. Mm. Okay, and he would bring in gummy bears for his class. That's I know it was never in his class. So again, the, the connection is not that strong. Yeah. I wasn't even taught by him. So I that's also, a Chicago I, company? No, it's like Wisconsin. I think. No, it's in Indiana, Northwest Indiana. Oh, okay, mm. you drive by it. The you drive by it when you go through uh, go through the region there. Yep. I believe Haribo is in Wisconsin. No, they've got they've got the big the big plant up there when you're just on the other side of the border. Yeah, Pleasant yeah. Prairie. Well, isn't a wasn't Jelly Belly up there too? I'm not sure. I think about it's about Jelly, the Jelly no, Belly. I think Jelly Belly's in like Rhode Island or something like that. Really? Ugh. I could be I wrong. Why. The Jelly Belly factory says it's in North Chicago. Oh, well, there you go. No, so, hey, who knows? I don't know. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, we're talking about the pitching here. Uh, Clevenger looked good. Uh, Giolito looked. Pretty decent. Obviously, we talked about his, his rough first and second innings, but he, he seemed to settle in. Uh, Lance Lynn, especially against the Astros, will take that start. And Dylan Cease, uh, did he do anything important? Oh, no, he struck he, out like he, 10 guys. Uh, so, again, like now Kopech, it, it's a big question mark. If he comes out and looks good, 
I don't have many question marks about this White Sox rotation. Like, I mean, can Clevenger continue to right. do I it? Mean, but like, there's, those are season long questions that yeah. you need to get answered. But you're right. There's a great first step for Clevenger. Uh, I, I would say that he's probably had the second best start of a White Sox starting pitcher yeah, so yeah. far. I think Lance Lynn got a little under undersold on what he did the other day basically because the last batter he faced hit that two-run home run. But uh, but Clevenger looked really good for, for from after the second inning on. He looked really good. And uh, I, I think, obviously, there's no touching what Dylan did on, on Thursday night. But if, you're, if we're talking about Clevenger being the second most impressive White Sox starter of the weekend, that's a really good sign for the White Sox, I think. I'm, I know Lance what, walked four people, struck out six. But I'm going to go with Lance more because he had to face both Tucker and and Alvarez, where Clevenger didn't sure. have to face Alvarez today, which is a godsend. I'm glad you did that, Dusty. Thank Jesus, man. That lineup is so much easier without Altuve and Alvarez. They should just have Tucker sit out and maybe Abreu sit out and just let <laughs> other people play. Seriously, Dusty, come on. But, uh, yeah, I, I was impressed. You, you guys, we're not talking about the other stuff with Clevenger. The pitching today was great. It was better than I even thought he would pitch ever this season and he was pretty damn good eight strikeouts versus the reigning champs and he made some of those people look really stupid yeah uh the the control is a little bit you know red flaggy or you know a little but overall i mean positives uh, there's there's nothing really when you win and you look on. good that's uh effectively wild yeah effectively wild <laughs> absolutely uh speaking of effectively wild steven's guy Gregory Santos coming out throwing 102, 102, 102 101, 102. He had kind of he had didn't have the greatest inning in the world, but he gave uh, up a hit, he gave up a walk, and he struck out a guy. Stephen, why is he your guy? <laughs> is it because he hustles or some shit? Well, he throws really hard. I always like that. But okay. does he I always like try him. to get thrown out at third base? Is that why you like him? <laughs> no, he tries stretching singles into doubles. That's nice. No, I really like him because uh, he's one of those reclamation projects where you know he could throw hard, and if he could just limit the walks, he could be a very effective bullpen piece. I would use reclamation project a little lightly because he's pretty young and hasn't really even gotten a shot at well, the, the at Giants like Johnny Cueto. Well, just Johnny ran, Cueto they, was a reclamation yeah, project. They, they ran year. out of right. space on his, on the roster for him. I mean, that, and they're a good team. I'm so. rooting for the guy. He's young. He's got a crazy good fastball, and if, if, he could, uh, if he could harness that, I think he could be a really good bullpen piece moving forward. Hey, the White Sox agreed. They put him on the opening day roster. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the White Sox. We're like, let's think. <laughs> there you go. You, you, you and the White Sox. Uh, eight pitches over 100 miles per hour for Gregory Santos uh, today. You want to talk about Raylo? Um, you, Do he we wasn't, have to? It wasn't a safe situation, yet he oh, almost blew it. God. He almost, he, well, he turned it into one if someone else would have come in <laughs> after him, that's right. for sure. But uh, He goes an inning, two hits allowed, two earned runs, two walks, and a K. Uh, and we could talk about the Luis Robert catch, because if he doesn't make that, that might even get messier. Yeah, I mean, those two runs that would have scored on that on that ball had it dropped and mm -hmm. Luis didn't catch it ended up scoring because the next two hit, hitters both got base hits but uh yeah my god Luis Robert Jr that catch I I mean I, I tweeted it out and I feel that way that is up there with that one he made in Kansas City yes. his rookie year yes that Herb oh, you yeah. you you were the first to point it out and obviously you can go to the replay and everybody can see it but the range. My God, the amount of ground he covered to get to that ball. We all know what that uh, part of that park in Houston is. The ball can just keep going, and it is still in play. But, man, Luis Moran a long, long way. We spent last year watching him take some curious routes to balls. And this year, between that one and the one he made on Kyle Tucker that was two nights two yesterday. Days ago? Yesterday. Mm -hmm. Holy mackerel. Those two catches are uh, in, insane. He's going to – I think Jason pointed it out on the broadcast – it's going to be difficult for him to make a better catch over the next uh, 158 games than the two that he made in Houston because those were just spectacular. Um, again, they didn't necessarily have, it, or the one today didn't necessarily have the game-saving quality that it that it that it you know to to match how spectacular the catch was because the next two hitters both got hits and drove in those two runners anyway. But uh, in a Inning, in an inning that was uh, rapidly getting away from Reynaldo Lopez um, to put another out on the board and to do it like that, wow. Well, let's ask the question, which one is better? Luis Robert, and this is thanks to Vinny Duber's article uh, back in 2020, uh, she, uh, you put Who's in that? Uh, uh, <laughs> Sarah Lang's uh, tweet, Luis Robert's catch against the Royals, 15% catch probability, a five-star play, needed to cover 86 feet of distance in 4.5 seconds of opportunity time. Today, 113 feet distance oh, covered, 
30.2 feet per second max sprint speed. 30 God is elite. Damn. And a 6.1 feet versus uh, jump versus the average jump. Uh, uh, Andrew Vaughn had the worst jump last year, I think, at like negative 12. So. The thing about Luis's catch, and Vinny explained it perfectly, like he's going into that cavernous place where there's a fence. There's his left fielder there, too. <laughs> like he's got to do all these things track the ball, not hit this left fielder, not hit the wall, and he pit, he catches it pretty easily. You know, he slides a foot first so he doesn't run into the wall. But, like, I thought off the bat, like, that's going to be a home run or that's going to be a double. There's no way no anybody's going to get there. And he started off in right center field, and he went and got that. And that's, as Vinny says, like, that's the thing that we missed from last year, dealing with a bunch of injuries and such. He didn't look like the defensive player that finished as the Gold Glover winner in 2020. That is the guy that I saw make that catch in Kansas City where he dove head first. And yes, Vinny, I think that catch is the catch today was even better than that Kansas City catch. Wow. And that Kansas City catch is phenomenal. Laying out foot Superman. face first, <laughs> going deep into the right field hole. He's just a phenomenal athlete. And that's why I get agitated with him when he plays less than because he can be one of the best in the game, but he hasn't hit that potential yet. When, when he won that gold glove as a rookie in 2020, we all went, yeah, he deserved it. Mm -hmm. And then the last two years, particular, obviously in 2021, such a limited playing time because of that injury. Last year, though, we looked at him and we were like, that's the, that's the gold glove guy? That's yeah. the guy that won the gold glove, huh? Hmm, interesting. Th this year, it's four games, obviously, but he's looked this weekend like he oh. did when it was a no-doubter that he should have won that gold glove. And if that's the case, if he's going to be doing this all summer, he's going to win another one. I mean, three spectacular plays and then one just above-average play as well. Uh, he makes the crazy catch running into the wall to Rob Tucker of a double. Uh, and then the next play, it wasn't a spectacular, you know, like, you know, highlight play but still the next play hit to him and he has to go into the gap basically the same way a running uh, running catch right yeah. running catch yeah. uh you know and he just showing off his speed again and then the same game running in and making a sliding oh catch. yeah uh, we saw that a ton in 2022 yeah. that where he'd come in and he'd hit that you know he'd do the pop-up slide in, in shallow center field uh that's a not an easy play and you know what was it uh jim edmonds always used to come in and make that to, with the with the front facing dive on that pop-up in shallow and, center and bad jumps. but but, hey, Luis has the speed where it, it, that ball can be hit real shallow and he can still get to it and make a catch like that. That was a really nice play yesterday that got kind of lost because the, the one on the Tucker uh, the Tucker hit to, to right center was so good. Kyle Tucker's so going to have some words with Luis Robert. <laughs> like, Come on, man. Let me get one in here. Come on. Did Kyle, did Kyle uh, Tucker get his contract yet? I don't like know. you just robbed me of two extra base hits, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, no, no, uh, no contract extension for Tucker. Uh, so that would have been nice for his uh, his contract talks. Uh, Niles at, saying, "A hey, Bulls just won. Hurry up and end the stream for CHGO no. Bulls. <laughs> we have a studio B for a reason. We are diehards. We're going for an hour long. We got an hour long post game here in Studio A. We're gonna have an, what? You're saying no? There's no roadcaster in Studio B. Son of a bitch. So what? what do you have to get off? No, we could go. We could keep going." What time are we at? Peck and Big Dave are just staring daggers at us over here. Get out of here, Niles. <laughs> Why isn't there a roadcaster? They're like, a playoff who, spot's who, on the line, the God damn it. You guys are in game Jake four. We, got it. We, got a, we split a series with the Astros. We did it last year, too. <laughs> the guys are saying take their time. Hey, Bulls fans over here waiting for them. The guys are here. They'll get you to your post game. We'll have the Goat Lieb here, too. Well, not here, but he'll be probably on TV. He'll from be on the, the show. United Center, so we're good. We are good. Uh, all right. Well, let's take a quick break here. We'll pay the bills and then we'll talk about more takeaways for uh, this game and this series. I do just want to say to uh, Luis Robert, I don't know if I'm fully out of the boat on he, he looks concerning at the plate. Again, facing Luis Garcia looked great. Uh, but also saw 10 forcing fastballs and seven cutters. Oh, oh, the, guy, the guy hit a double and a home run today. I, That's pretty I, good. I, after I, after I, the three games where we were like, oh, God. Double in a home run today. That's a nice little uh, right. But the reason why he was struggling was against a certain pitch, and he didn't face a certain pitch. That's all I'm saying. That was uh, his first time facing in his career as well, so he hadn't seen any of his pitches prior. Right. Just like, want, want to add some context. It's my bad. Pitching and coaching malpractice to pitch Luis uh, Robert the pitches they threw to him today. Yes, I agree. Especially when seeing how he looked the whole weekend. You got him right. Thank you, Houston. Yeah. Hopefully, it continues. <laughs> Hopefully, teams continue to throw him fastballs because if they do. We're going to be fine. He's back. Uh, it's just it's like had, throwing Javier Baez a fastball. Literally. It's, it's, don't, don't throw him one. Don't do it. 
Uh, we're going to take a quick break. Let you know about FOCO. Uh, this Tim Anderson bobblehead is from FOCO, our friends over at FOCO Chicago. We've already got the best coverage for your favorite teams to get fitted in the best sports gear around. FOCO has you covered from Soldier Field to the living room, north or south side with hoodies, slippers, signs, bobbleheads, and everything in between. Get decked out like tomorrow with apparel from the leaders in sports merch and collectibles. FOCO, that's F-O-C-O. If you're looking for the perfect gift for the football fan in your life, FOCO's got you covered with hoodies to fight that Lake Michigan breeze. So check out FOCO.com, F-O-C-O.com, or click the link in the description below for all non-presale items. Just the promo code CHGO for 10% off. Come on, baby. Come on. Let's go, baby. T- uh, Tim. Uh, TA impression? Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> he didn't. It was it a double? Yeah, it was a double, right? TA doubled but, off the center field fence today. Yeah. I, I, thought he was, I thought he was going to light it up with a home run. Um, I guess that was Yohan Moncada, though. Uh, and you could light up your house and do it more efficiently <laughs> with the Combat Energy Efficiency <laughs> Program. They're committed to helping families and businesses. You guys want to read the ads? <laughs> I'll read one wow. if you want me to. Not wow. right now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm not the best. So, <laughs> wow. You can follow him at sass <laughs> underscore w underscore Anderson. Name stinky for a reason. Uh <laughs> Committed to helping families and business in the communities we serve save money and energy. Community comment offers free facility assessment. You can read it. <laughs> oh wow! He's got the, now he's got the giggles. Well, now I'm laughing. Where are we at now? <laughs> just, just go. It's just right there. It's all. It's. An authorized engineer will work with you to develop a detailed assessment plan specific to your goals and needs. These can be done in person, virtually, or last approximately two hours. Within three to four weeks, customers will receive a report detailing energy and efficiency projects that can start. Working on them immediately. Each recommendation will include estimated energy savings, cost savings, projected costs, potential incentives, and simple payback. Let's see. Don't wait. Get started saving money and energy today for energy saving tips. And to schedule your free assessment, fat of facility assessment, go to comed.com slash powering B-I-Z. Damn. Herb with the pinch hit home run. Killed it. Matt stares over there. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, you're, Herb, you're a regular Lenny Harris. Anybody ever tell you that? Oh, that's, man, that's, uh, that's, that's love right there. I love Lenny Harris. <laughs> Do you remember Lenny Harris? Pinch hit extraordinary? I, I, I don't. I just Most all I, time, right? Yeah. How about Thad Bosley? I thought it was Matt Stairs. That's why I said Matt Stairs. Oh. Thad Bosley? Lenny Harris? Lenny Harris has the most pinch hits of all time, I believe. Oh, pinch hits. Yeah. Oh. He was a lot of teams, like Phillies. Oh, yeah. Mets. Lenny Harris, you kind of look like Lenny oh, Harris. I am. I am. No, but I mean, he's kind of, you got that young I wish look. I was looking like, like Lenny that, Harris. Yeah, well, I mean, softball that's, not a, that's not a current picture of Lenny oh, Harris. Oh, no. You know, <laughs> yeah, no. He probably does have a little gray in his beard. He's about, what, 58 now? Uh, He's 58. Boom! Wow. <laughs> look at me knowing Lenny Harris' age. Herb is on fire. <laughs> uh, Yeah, he has most pinch hits in a career with 212. Uh, Matt Stairs, I think, has most pinch hit home runs. That can be right. Uh, no, his, his ability. Yeah. Oh, MLB record. 23 home runs. Boom. All right. That's so it. good. Look That's at us with our pinch hit knowledge. Uh, <laughs> all right. Biggest takeaways from the game. Vinny's going to have an article up on allsthgo.com later with the full takeaways. And he's got a, a deep, in-depth article for you. Usually his articles are about like seven, eight minutes uh, to, to read. You know, Vinny, Vinny goes in hard. You just put on like a live You put on like a live Almond Brothers song right. and you finish reading that before that song's over. There you go. Uh, so go check out allchgo.com uh, later or tomorrow morning. We'll make sure we'll share it at chgo underscore White Sox as well. But Vinny, what is your biggest takeaway from the series? Well, I'll say this. I mean, it's very difficult to uh, to exclude Yohan Moncada, but uh, he was the kind of general topic for today when we joined the show. So I will go ahead and bring up Tim Anderson. T.A. is T.A. No doubt about it right now. He had a hit in all four games, multiple hits in three of those four games. Uh, he is out there dancing around on the base paths, uh, you know, already playing with those new rules. Mm-hmm. He is taking off for bases, and my goodness, guys, he's got two walks in the first four games of the season. How about that? That 162-walk pace he was on is now down to uh, to a mere 81 uh, walk pace, but uh, but still pretty oh, he impressive. Did that pretty quickly. That's pretty nice. 162 divided by two. Yeah. Man, look at you over here. You look, I thought he was a math guy. What's the square root of 49? Seven. seven. Look at you. Yeah. Finally. Yeah. All right. Uh, but uh, speaking of seven, Tim Anderson is playing fantastically, uh, and he just he just looks like that guy. We talk all the time how this team is powered by him. This team goes because of Tim Anderson at the top of the lineup, as well as all the other things he does not while hitting, but man, uh, the, the offense has looked great so far from Tim Anderson. And if he can do this, there's going to be guys out there, uh, 
with with RBI opportunities because he's going to start the game off with a hit. You know that that's coming. Uh, and then also too, flash the power today a little bit as well. Some ballparks that some ballparks that doubles a home run, I would imagine. Uh, but he'll take the double off the wall to drive in a run and two stolen bases. Yeah, I mean he's just been he's doing it all. He's doing it all, and I think that's what the White Sox. Uh, not just want from him. They need that from him. And to see that he's doing it with such effectiveness in the first series of the season against the defending champions, that's a great job by T.A. Well, and we don't expect Yohan Manca- or Eloy Jimenez to be you know hitting like he does in, in four-game series like this. So if Yohan Moncada's not having a good series, maybe Eloy Jimenez is. But if Tim Anderson's doing this, you know, series in, series out, there's going to be someone on the base to drive in. Absolutely. My biggest big, takeaway? My biggest takeaway is hits. Hits, 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 hits. hits. More hits. The White Sox just got the job done. 11 hits in the first game, 11 hits in the second game, 10 hits yesterday, and then I didn't even count how many hits they had today. 83, I think. 83. 13. 13 hits today. Like, this is not next weekend series versus the Pittsburgh Pirates. If they did that, people would be like, oh, it's the Pirates. It's the goddamn best team, odds on favor to winning the World Series. I think Vinny picked them to repeat as the World Series champions. They're good. Their pitching staff, yes, they lost Justin Verlander, but their pitching staff is damn good, and the White Sox hitters chased each one of those guys before they get to the sixth inning. And that's not a small feat, as the starting pitcher that started the first game, Fran Valdez, had 25 consecutive quality starts last year, which is a record. So White Sox battering the Houston Astros, the pitching staff is a phenomenal thing, and I know they led the league in hits last year, but... White Sox mixed in a couple home runs and doubles this year instead of all the singles they had this year. Yeah, they lead the league in doubles now. So, yeah. great. There you go. Uh, also, uh, we have Super Chat from Baseball Toss, right? Uh, or L. Sudid uh, saying Pedro called the Lou Bob breakout in first inning two. It's La Pantera, folks. Uh, but in the this morning uh, to the beat writers, uh, Pedro Grafal said, I'm not concerned about – Luis Robert at all. He's one of our better hitters. The number two spot is a good spot for him. He's one swing away from just being electric. That can happen tonight in the first inning. Who knows? His track record is pretty good. And so. what did he do in the first inning? Rocketed a double off the uh, the big wall out there in left field. And, so And then even later, hit a home run. So, oh, yeah, boom. It got him in the swing. Thanks. Absolutely. Uh, pretty nice. Uh, I do want to say effort and energy. I think we saw... Obviously, the energy from Oscar Colas out in right field when he makes that catch. But we saw stolen bases. We saw hustle, uh, Stephen. Uh, we saw Yohan Moncada try to tr- uh, stretch a, a, a field there to a, a triple. I'll just use that. But, uh, you know, I, I liked that they consistently brought the same fierceness each and every game. It didn't seem like they gave up on at-bats. It didn't seem like they ever felt like they were down and out in games. It felt like they were always consistently trying to have the best at-bats. Some guys didn't look great each and every time up. You know, Luis Robert, obviously, we talked about in the first three games. Elvis Andrus, as we mentioned. Uh, Andrew Benatendi didn't look perfect, but they'll get that figured out. Uh, Melissa bringing up 0 for 10 with uh, runners uh, with the bases loaded. I think that'll change, right? <laughs> I, think I mean, certainly it has facing. to. I mean, I, I think, yeah. Worst pitching, but uh, I, I like the effort and energy. Yeah, I, I we talked about Colas earlier and, and, and kind of the energy that we saw from him. And I think the last couple of days we talked about, and you brought it up, you know, some of that, Maybe some of the Pedro Grafol effect being visible, right? The taking the extra base, whether that's Moncada doing it unsuccessfully uh, the other night or Benintendi doing it successfully mm-hmm. and getting a hustle double, uh, you know, in, in one of the other games. Uh, Robert, we, we just we talked about the, the, the ball that he hit in the first inning. That ball was not necessarily, uh, you know, a no-doubt double, right? I mean, yeah, he yeah. knocked it off the wall, but... There's, that's a short wall. There's yep. a guy right there. He had to, he had to hustle into second base to make sure he got that. So, um, yeah, there have been a few guys who have been motoring around the bases, heads up base running, and you know even uh, people thinking that they're seeing some of the same. Like, oh no, you know wh- what's going on here? Why didn't they run that? They should have scored from that. Those can be easily explained away. I mean, you saw Moncada today when uh, yeah, Grandal put that ball in the right, right. field corner. Moncada only makes it to third. People are like, "What's going on?" Well, if you wa- if you watch the replay, guy almost got his head taken <laughs> off by that hit from, from off of uh, off of Yaz's bat. One hundred five so miles per hour. Not only did he have to freeze, he had to duck too. No wonder he didn't make it all the way home. But I mean, I, I think you can tell that these guys, and then certainly what TA we've been talking about is doing on the base paths as well. You can see that. You can see what I what looks like maybe a little bit of that Pedro Grafol effect. Uh, you know, you talked about uh, effort and energy and 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 not being out of it, playing in every game. 
That's, those, those are the words that Pedro used in his introductory press conference about what this team was going to look like. So you might be seeing it early. And Vinny, after you mentioned the Tim double right there, how many ballparks it would have been out of, Would It Dong on Twitter says 21 of 30. Wow. There it would have been out of, including guaranteed right field. 415, Tim Anderson hit that ball too. There you go. So that would have been one of the 2020 seasons and for thank Tim God, Anderson. Thank God Chess McCormick didn't have to run up a hill and uh, dodge flagpoles in order to uh, come <laughs> up with it. Uh Chaz stole two bases. Uh, Colas also adding one today as well, just talking a little bit about the effort and energy, uh, at least for the White Sox. Uh, you know, getting on base, and even when they are singles, they're trying to get those guys in scoring positions. So uh, that, that's that been fun to watch. Uh, anything else you guys want to mention today or from the series that we haven't? Is a split series with the reigning champs good? It's great. I mean, everyone complained about 81 and 81 last year. No, you. that's what you do on the road, especially versus tough teams like the Houston Astros. We've seen the White Sox go down to Houston and get that ass tapped four games in a row, and it's not been close except for the Carlos Rodon start. This is a different team. This is a different um, organization mindset. Starting off against this team, I think this will shoot them in the right direction because that is the team that you know will push you to the limit. They've been to the mountaintop, and you're staying right with them. And many would say, like myself, the White Sox – Looked like the better team. Remember last year when the Baltimore Orioles came in and they weren't as good as they were at the end of the year? And we saw them like, that's the better team. The Orioles, they, they're they a team that's hungry, looking to do something, and they look like they're fierce and they want to win while the White Sox look lifeless. You could say that about the White Sox in Houston this weekend. White Sox looked like a different team, hungry to win these games, even though they only won two out of the four. I think they looked impressive in their wins now. Time, you know, uh, was it? Momentum is only good as your next day starter. Michael Kopech has to come to the plate and do what his r- fellow starting members did in their first four games. Yeah, I think, I don't, I don't know if this is a takeaway as much as it is just keep an eye on this. Obviously, people are talking about the bullpen. Obviously, the bullpen is going to continue to be a story um, in terms of both A, how Pedro uses it, and B, how it performs. I mean, there have been some there have been some nights here where uh, guys have not gotten the job done. Certainly, Reynaldo Lopez today, and then you know Kendall Graveman jumps out for what he uh, uh, you know was unable to do in game two. So um, it's going to continue to be a story. These guys are going to be continued to watch closely. Different guys are going to be used in different kinds of situations. So um, you know, I'm not saying buckle up and hold on to your hat. I think they got some good arms in that bullpen, and boy, did Aaron Bummer look like the Aaron Bummer oh, of old today. But um, you know, it's it's going to continue to be a thing, uh, you know, un, un, until they get it uh, a little bit more smoothed out and a little bit more figured out. Well, and two, uh, maybe they'll, they'll if they got a ton of guys on base, so hopefully they score a little bit more runs. So you know, sure. it's, it's just you know, a little less yeah. tighter and mm-hmm. uh, you know a little less uh, high pressure situations. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think you mentioned it too uh, earlier while we were watching the game. Uh, each bullpen member getting used twice. Everybody except twice. Uh, Diekman and Kelly. Kelly. Pitched twice and in then this uh, first four games of the season. Graveman pitched three times, right? Correct. He pitched, yeah. Yes. So, um, you know, we, we kind of seeing the the balances of when these guys are used to. Raylo, when he's used, all in the ninth inning. So I don't know if that's a sign to come as well. But uh, just uh, things to take away from the first series. And uh, obviously, Vinny will have a piece up at All CHGO with the large majority of takeaways. White Sox finish the first series 2-2. Two and two. Tomorrow's game is at 2-10 against the Giants. It is Michael Kopech. Versus D. Scalfani, Anthony, Anthony D. Scalfani. Is it? Okay, no, yeah. I was just making sure. I don't know if it's Alex one. Uh, Anthony D. Scalfani versus Michael Kopech at two ten. We will have a post game with you, and Vinny will be at the park. So make sure you follow him on Twitter at Vinny Duber. He's our CHGO White Sox beat writer. That's Herb Lawrence. You can follow him on Twitter at Eckernwall twenty three. He's our CHGO White Sox community leader. I'm Sean Anderson. You can follow me on Twitter at Sean underscore W underscore Anderson. Shay Fidel saying White Sox Nation stand up in a super chat. We appreciate you. And Herman saying seven ten. 10 days at a time. Uh, Pedro Grafal mindset. Pedro Ball. Pedro Grafal mindset. Uh, we'll see what they do in the next, uh, what, three days? Maybe they'll maybe they'll have a, a plus 500 record. I'm very, I'm very, I feel like that needs to be, I might talk to him about this. What? Pedro. This need, does, doesn't this need to be adjusted for the regular season? If you're going seven, seven or five days at a time, you're going to be in the, in middle, the middle of series. series. Yeah. But shouldn't it just be series at a time? Rotation? Yeah, but. I don't know. Yeah. I'm just trying to think. Like, well, right. that's kind of that's uh, baseball. Yeah. Time. I mean, it works out also, for this first series because you play five games in a row, you rest, right? And then you have the five. Well, you have the f- 
five games again with the two late remaining Giants games and the three in Pittsburgh. So it works initially, then it goes to hell. Also, hey, do whatever you want. Yeah, <laughs> thank you very much. I need to start tracking if uh, Vince Velasquez is going to make a start versus the White Sox, too, with that Pittsburgh series coming up. I, I'm going to be out there, so I'll ask him. Oh, you, you're going to be out there? Yeah. Um, me, Tanny, and uh, Shane. I know he's pitching today. Shane are going. If that oh, yeah, that, that lines up perfectly. He's pitching today? Yeah. There you go. I could see Vince Velo? Yes. I'll tell you Mercy. what. Oh, yeah. So okay. the White Sox get to see Vince Velo even better. Saturday the 8th is <laughs> projected to be Clevenger versus Velasquez. Um, That's probably the game I'm going to. 5.35 p.m. All right. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Again, post game after White Sox, at, uh, no, White Sox Giants for the home opener. Uh, 210. Make sure you're following Vinny okay, again because he'll be at the park. Uh, Thank you, Steven Nicholas, for producing the show. And thank you to everyone for hanging out with us in the chat. Make sure you're hitting the thumbs up on the way out. We're at like 67. So at least get us to the nice number. We got 240 watching. We got to get more than 67. Come on, guys. (laughs) Hit Hit triple digits like Ray Lowe. Come on. For Chris Danhill's 40th birthday. For for Ronaldo Lopez, uh, get us to 100 likes. For Gregory Santos, 102. Come on. There you go. Hey, uh, thank you, Steven Nicholas. And the Bulls postgame is coming up because they just won two. Nice day in Chicago. Go Sox. Thank you.